So, um, let's kind of kick off the podcast um, appropriately. Welcome to Limit Break by Final Fantasy Radio. Um, okay, so I like how in our in our podcast we have the little Limit Break sound uh, play over every time we say Limit Break. Um, <laughs> so um, we'll keep on doing that. Uh, just have fun. And uh, our last podcast was very uh, all over the place. And I really, really liked, liked, you know, how organic it felt and everything and how we how we had a lot of fun talking about everything. Um, but this one is going to be a lot more focused. And that's a good thing, too. Um, Jack could not join us today. Um, Rin, for all of those that don't know who Jack is. Um, but it's Scott and me, Helk, uh, you know, Sixuchi is, is in the house with, with Helkaweth. Um, and it, we're holding down the fort today and what we're, (laughs) our, our, our focus today, rather than hitting everything that we can think of, um, is to really focus on the mobile format that we've seen Final Fantasy take on, um, and the funny thing is, is that throughout this week, I was, I was taking a look at all of the breadth of of different Square Enix games on on the mobile device, and holy crap! Uh, yeah, a lot. It is. They they dove into that head first, and and I say Square Enix. I could have just said Final Fantasy because holy crap! Um, there's a yeah, lot of there's so many Final Fantasy games on the mobile device. Definitely. Uh, um. So I've played, I've, I've played quite a few of them, and I just uh, picked up this week. I was playing, uh, what is it, the new one? Uh, is it? I'm I'm looking at it right now. Exvius. Um, oh yeah. I started, I started playing Exvius, um, and it, it it I'm good. We'll we'll talk about it a little bit more in depth in a little bit, um, but. Uh, to to start let let's let's kind of let's kind of talk about this you know with with the mobile format I think that it it allows people anywhere anytime to play a Final Fantasy game um, which is great uh, I think that that's that's a very cool thing um, I think that the, the, there are the pros and cons to the mobile format um, when it comes to Final Fantasy and I, Scott what what's your thoughts uh, towards Final Fantasy hitting the mobile device. I think it's a great opportunity for people who already have mobile devices. But like you're saying, there are definitely some cons to having such, you know, a, a broad mobile front. And not to mention, hey, remember, it's a cell phone. We use it to text and call people, right? So <laughs> way to kill your battery, Square Enix. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, don't get me wrong. Um, I think uh, I've... I was playing Final Fantasy IV. I, I bought that off the Google App Play Store, and I bought the After Years. And so far, I think Square Enix ported it quite well to the mobile format. Mm-hmm. Is this the uh, the the four version? Is that the uh, the 3D remake that you're yes. playing? Yes. Yep. With Cecil and Rosa and all of, all the gang. <laughs> yep. Um. What of you know? And and it, it's one of my favorite favorite Final Fantasies to play. It does show its age. Um. It is. Oh, it's, it's an older game, but it's still a fun game, and I love it. And you know, I mean, anybody who's in in the chat room with me on a regular basis sees my my avatar as Kane. You know, the dragoon. Yeah, um, I love the dragoons. <laughs> yep. Um. You know, and Kane's kind of a jerk throughout that game. Um. <laughs> even when he's a good guy, he's kind of a jerk. Um. <laughs> but I I think that you know that was the first. Final Fantasy that I purchased on the mobile device, I believe, was was Final Fantasy One, um, and that was the it, it's the remake version that they released on to the it was originally the PlayStation that they remastered. They didn't really remake. Well, I guess they remastered it. I don't know. They made it look better. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, I love I love the classic look of the the NES. Uh, you know, sprites and, and world. I mean, they're, they're tattooed on my arm, but Nostalgia. yeah, but they, you know, it's good that they did update the look in a way. And, uh, 
so that was the first one I bought, and I thought that it was it was pretty cool that you were able to, you know, play Final Fantasy on the mobile device. I also bought four on the mobile device as well, um, because I remember I was going on a cruise, and I was like, I want to be able to play. You know, I don't want to bring my laptop and everything. I want to be able to have my tablet, and I put it on my tablet, and voila, you have Final Fantasy four in 3D, you know, on, you know, wherever you go. Isn't it um, so convenient? Yeah, I know. It, it it's so convenient. However, the and and this is where I go into the cons of of a mobile mobile format, I would say. Um I think that the problem is is that not not necessarily the problem, but the experience of the Final Fantasy is a little watered down. Um because I'm not playing Final Fantasy and and I think Square has really realized this and We'll talk about it with Exvius in a moment. Um, I, I'm i very much a... If I'm going to play a Final Fantasy game, I need a few hours. You know, if, I, I need to dedicate time to playing that game. I'm not going to dedicate playing time, play, play time on a phone, necessarily. You know what I mean? Yeah, of it, course. You, you, I don't feel comfortable playing... And plus, you know, you're draining your battery. You're doing exactly. things like that. You know, it's still a phone, like you said, Scott, and that's one of one of the most important features of your phone is that it it's your communication device. Um, I feel like with a lot of the Final Fantasy games I've played on my phone, I've played it for like 15 minutes and then I'm like, OK, and then I go back to it every now and again, but I'm never committed to it. Um, well, it's which, hard, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's very, very difficult for us to. uh for, for us to kind of, for you to dedicate a lot of time on your phone. Because when you pull out your phone, you're typically not in a very quiet setting or very relaxed setting. You know, I mean, if, if, if I'm on my phone, I'm typically walking around, I'm somewhere, I'm waiting for something. Yep. Um, I'm trying to catch a train, I'm trying to catch a bus, I'm waiting for a flight. I'm not in my gaming atmosphere, so to speak. Or the mentality for that one, right? Yeah. At that point, you're just like you look at your phone and you rec- you're kind of looking in the perception that okay, this this is strictly just for me to call and text. I don't really want to wait for a bus, you know, defeat a couple goblins and then you know get to a cutscene. Especially the cutscenes. I mean, the cutscenes are the most important factors in the game. So when you're out, you know, waiting for that that plane ride or you know that bus, it's like wow, this guy's talking so loud, he just ruined the cutscene. I couldn't even see it, you know. <laughs> Exactly. And, and I think that, I think that that's, that's one of the weirder parts of, of this. Um, I think Exvius gets that. I think it understands that because you're able, you're in and out of, of playing the game. Now it doesn't play like a normal Final Fantasy. It doesn't play like the, the explore and that sort of thing. It's very much a, do you want to go here? Do you want to go here? Do you want to go here? And then you have three fights and you chain attacks and stuff like that. And I'm not going to go too deep into the play of 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 Exvius. Um it's it it's coming off as as a very nice game. Um but it's not it's not the Final Fantasy that I'm used to. If that yeah, makes I any know sense. In that sense it's kind of like let's just compile a bunch of sprites and kind of you know, take it from there. I don't want to sound so demeaning, but Hey, look on the bright side. I mean, they. I, I'm sure you've seen the trailers and teasers for Mobius. Yes. Like, oh my God, the graphics. It's like eye candy to us. So let, let, I don't want to, you know, extort our hopes in that sense. But realistically, hey, you never know how that could turn out, right? Exactly. And I'm, I, I'm, I've been very cynical when it comes to a lot of what Square Enix does at times. And I've decided that going into this year, I would become much more optimistic. Yes, um, definitely. It, and when it comes to the mobile device, unfortunately, sometimes there can be a cash grab there. Oh, yeah. Um, but with with how Mobius looks, I, I'm very optimistic on how on how that could turn out. Um, and, and they've got, like, job features, too. Yeah. So it's like they're kind of going back to the square roots. So yeah. <laughs> get it, it square. It, ah, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but... So, in terms of like, and and we we 
we look at some of the key points, you know, what's our favorite Final Fantasy mobile game in a sense? I think of I think the classic mobile games are very are are very conducive to the mobile environment. I think it's hard to to keep on them, but I think that they're you know, the way they've changed the you know, the battle screens so that you tap on this and you tap on that and you select the magic you know, from there, or you select your attack from there. I think that works out incredibly well. I think they formatted them well. I think the 3D4 was probably my was probably my favorite out of them. Um, well, it had the auto battle feature too, right? That was well, that too. Impressive. Yeah, and that's you just the thing. sit there and auto battle the. the you, uh, I guess grinding makes it much more easier when you can just auto battle it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that you know with. With the classic games being released, and to try not to drag it away from the mobile idea as much, but, you know, uh, Final Fantasy IX just came out on the mobile as well as on Steam, and they've added so many good features, like, you know, you can turn off random encounters, you can do that, you know, and granted, I don't like to necessarily try to edit the game too much, but... the original, I feel that. But I feel like... In some instances, nine's random encounter rate was huge. I oh, feel yeah. like that, like that was like you'd walk ten feet and okay, you're in another fight, and that can get annoying if you're just if you're it, trying yeah. to if you're trying to get through a part of a game really quickly. Um, you know, it 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 really it, it really is. They're doing a good job, and you know, kudos when you do a good job. Now, one thing that I don't like is the way they've changed some of the graphics. Yeah, it's um, it's poorly rendered in some of them. Definitely. Um you know, we you know, let's take Final Fantasy 6 for instance. Um and we have a a great looking uh you know, it, it on the on the Super Nintendo 6 was a phenomenal looking game. Like for being a 16-bit game, I I go back to looking that on looking at that on the Super Nintendo and I go that is a gorgeous game um just just from the pixel art from all of it it was so awesome looking and then you play the mobile or and or the steam release and they smoothed out the characters and you know I mean if if you li- if you listen to the the first podcast um on YouTube I played a little bit of final fantasy six on steam and recorded it and just had that playing you know in the background while you listen to the podcast and it, it's just like you look at it and you go eh, looks kind of worse kind of looks like <laughs> crap doesn't it you know and and i don't know why they did it it was like th- that game was gorgeous and and let's let's be for real here people love pixel art right now pixel art is crazy popular uh, trending yeah, it's it's a very hip thing to look at things as. Um, so I don't know why they found, felt the need to go, and we need to make this look better or make it look smoother. You know, it's like I didn't... You could have just left it and just changed some of the menus and gave gave me that nostalgia feel. Exactly. I, I don't know. And, and that's, you know pick them up, push them down sort of thing. You know, I pick them up, say I'm optimistic and then push them down for being like, how dare you change the pixel art of Tara? You know, she was a beautiful sprite and how dare you ruin her? (laughs) Leave Tara unknown. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. But I think that we agree. I think we agree that the experience on the phone is different. Um, Yeah, definitely. I think that, I think that it's just, it's just so it, you you feel like it, it it's not rushed but it's it's a different feel to it um completely different so and yeah you've lost all sense of hardware right so it's all touch screen interactions yeah. so yeah you don't you don't have a keypad or anything like that you're not you're not clicking buttons you're just touching touching glass and i don't know about you but like sometimes mistouches happen oh my god all the time you know i was playing xvius yesterday and i'm you know i'm feeding the kids breakfast and everything and they're screaming and i'm trying you know i'm trying to kill a monster and uh you know i'm trying to hit attack you know to chain an attack between two guys and they wouldn't attack and i'm like why the hell is this not working 
And then, you know, like I hit like a millimeter to the right and they attack and it's like, come on, guys. You know, it, it the controls there are a little bit wonky. Yeah. For the most part, some of the it, the controls are pretty good. But, you know, having a having a controller is something that we really take for granted. How how tight controls really are with a controller. I think. Um, so that really that really made me made me appreciate that so but yeah it, a controller can really can really just improve an experience just tremendously and and i think that it's getting better on on the screen i think that it's still hard to replace a controller yeah i saw like a couple of those what was it like uh buttons that attach to the touch screen but mm-hmm. uh twenty dollars i don't know if they're that great quality <laughs> yeah let me show you one let me see i have this game vice thing oh that is awesome and let me try to get it around here yep. so you hook this up to your ipad and this is on an ipad air um and it's very tight it's very good you know like the the responsiveness of the controls right there so like for when I'm like, when I'm sitting around like in the living room and I want to play a game, this is really good. Um, you know, like for for Final Fantasy games, for anything on the on the iPad, this works out very well. Now, this just set you back on. This is a hundred bucks. You know, oh. so, so that's the thing. Very tight. You're gonna pay a price for it. Definitely, so, especially uh, good drivers and t- hardware. Exactly. But it, like I said, it. It, it came very highly recommended, so it was one of those, okay, let's give it a go. Why not? Um, yeah. And it was worth bang for your buck, right? So Exactly. So, um, so uh, when we talk about this and everything, you know, we're, we have a, uh, one big thing that's happening with Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy XI hitting the mobile format. And it's not only Square Enix that's working on it. Now, this is slated to come out this year. Um, so I'm a little I'm a little iffy on if it will actually be released this year because it's late in the year. I would have thought we'd see a little bit more on it, mm-hmm. uh, especially since Eleven is still a played game. You know, we've talked about that. Yeah, People we definitely are... talked about that in the last podcast. You know, I I uh, I was just on Twitch before we uh, we hopped on to record, and uh, I caught one of our one of our one a uh, guy that hangs out in my stream occasionally, and guy who uh, checks out our radio from time to time. Um, he was playing Final Fantasy XI, streaming Final Fantasy XI, and what he, uh, you know. And I'm just I'm just wondering what their expectations for delivery on this is because, you know, they said late 2016. We're about halfway through 2016, <laughs> and the best that we've seen are a few pictures taken with a cell phone of some of the work, and I I don't know if. Because the company that's working on it is Nexon, and I believe. Oh no! Oh no! Maple Store. Yeah. yeah. So, so you have a company that that has done things like that, and that's this is what I'm expecting this Final Fantasy XI release to be. It's going to be a completely different game. You know, if you go onto the Final Fantasy XI Reddit, they have a lot of information on the upcoming mobile release. Um, but they uh. I'm I'm just wondering how long they actually support the 11 mobile game because I I see it as them trying to grab a bunch of a, a bunch of money and then it kind of just sits and then is eventually retired. And I don't know. I I I've I've played Nexon games before. I'm trying to remember which ones. Was was City of Heroes, City of Villains, a Nexon game? I'm trying to remember. Was, I'm pretty sure it was City of Heroes, Mag- Mabinogi, Maple Story, Combat Arms. Yep. Oh, Nexon. Yeah. <laughs> These, you know, it, it's yeah. I'm 
here we are, Maple Story, Maple Story Two, just in case you wanted to play the second one. Um, <laughs> Eve Online. Yep, that's right. Yeah, I mean these are these are games that you know there's there's a bunch of them I'm look, looking at just the list and a lot of them are closed in in America now generic yeah i mean, <laughs> i mean, there's nothing here that makes me go yeah um i don't know i i i want to be excited for them for for a release like this because i think that the mobile device is lacking a an mmo definitely where have you ever seen an MMO on the mobile front? Come on. Other than yeah. mobile strike, and that's just kind of like Call of Duty associated stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that the thing is, is that if it isn't done right, I think that it's just going to be, uh, well, that failed. Moving on. You know, and, and Eleven deserves more respect than that. I Most think definitely. That, I think that Eleven has been so popular for so long. I think it deserves to be done well. Um, for those people that really enjoy Eleven, and I did for a time, I can't, like I said in the previous podcast, I don't have all the time in the world to dedicate to an MMO anymore, unfortunately. Too many, too many responsibilities, too many things, and, but if they released a, uh, a mobile, you know, a mobile version, I could hop in there and, and tool around every now and again, and, you know, and probably get addicted, um, you know, and then, you know, ruin an iPad playing it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of iPads later. <laughs> yeah, a couple of iPads later. You know, I have an iPad Pro. Let's see how it looks on that. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if we'll see it this year. Um, I haven't heard anything else since seeing those screenshots that they took with the cell phone. And because I haven't, you know, typically when you don't hear about something, it's because it's not happening. Still- there's delays, something's getting pushed back, you know, and then you worry that, that it won't happen. Um, you know, it, I hope it does well. I hope it, it is a good translation over to the, over to the mobile device. Um, but we'll see, you know, what, what, what are you thinking on that? Yeah, I have the same thoughts as you. It's kind of like, uh, they're definitely trying something new. This is, I mean, when have we ever tried an MMORPG, like Japanese RPG, um, on a mobile front? Uh, yep. There's been nothing. So, I mean, as long as the development team at Square Enix really ports this and renders it well, you know, buffers up the character sprites, obviously, you know, we don't want to crash anyone's battery here. So, as long as they take those precautions, I, I think it might come out good. I just, I wonder if when they actually release it on the mobile front, if they'll then close down the servers, like the actual... Um, computers uh like online servers or yep. will it be attached to the actual mobile servers that's what i'm kind of i think about. they i think they said that it would be completely separate from that oh, wow uh, so that's that's also a brave thing to do yeah uh, definitely you're setting up like you got to get a whole bunch of other servers for that stuff and whatnot so yeah so we'll we'll see what happens there um so honestly like you were saying before i think they might delay it just because like well, think about the Final Fantasy 15 hype that's coming out at the end of September. Don't you think they're going to try to really push on marketing and advertising that game? Yeah, I mean, haven't I mean, that's that's been pretty much what they've been doing. And that's that's been that's been pretty much like people keep on going, "Have you have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have you pre-ordered?" I don't pre-order, by the way. I'm not a I I'm don't not, I'm not that type of guy either. <laughs> I can't I after Heaven's Word Final Fantasy 14, I don't pre-order anymore. I feel that I gave my money too early to something, even though I would have bought it. Yes, definitely. That, when something's feel, not like mastered and you just like, oh, yeah. so many bugs and glitches and they haven't even fixed it. So why am yeah. I ordering? Mm. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like I feel like I, I need to make them earn my money from now on instead of going, yeah, I'm going to buy it right away. You know, I'm going to I'm going to put my money down before I even get the game. And they even try to catch you with uh, the pre-order sprites of, like, Noctis, so it's like... <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, I'm good. It's like, I don't need that, you know, and just give me the game. Just Thank give you. me the game, and that's it. And I will let you know if I like the game, you know? That's the sort of thing that's happening with me now. So, um... So we'd be we'd be remiss to not, uh... not discuss a current very popular mobile 
sensation that has been littering our sidewalks with people running after Charizards and you Don't know. Don't catch them all. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I hope I I hope in editing I remember to play that as I'm talking about this. Uh, yes, please. Um, but so Pokemon Go, obviously, I went to I went to Disney World. And we we had a couple friends go with us, and these they were constantly on their phones trying to capture things. I mean, I have it on my phone. I played a little bit. Um, so do I. <laughs> I think that I I think that it's it's cool. It 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 gets people moving. It gets people working together towards stuff. It makes um, the cell phone companies money for the data you're using. <laughs> yeah, so much, so much. Verizon is like, yes, Pokemon Go, thank you so much. Yep. <laughs> um But I I I have to think that like okay, so what 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 does what can we do? You know, now that we've seen this 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 happen, you know you know, we've seen a successful you go here and do something in real life. I I would love to see some you know somebody at 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 Square Enix kind of go. Well, Final we, Fantasy go. <laughs> yeah, why, why why can't we have people you know create a character, go to areas you know explore, you know go you go to a mall and you're exploring a dungeon, and there's a boss over in the corner Behemoth. and you, yeah, Behemoth or something like that, and you fight it. And you get items, and you can equip them to your character. I mean, this is this is a cool idea, and I'm just spitballing it. And people, people out there, you know, there are people working for game companies that make way more money than I do that should be having this idea, because Pokemon Go has kind of spurred that thought. Um, I would I would hope it has. So actually, I, I think you touched on a great idea, like. As I was like, envision yourself just walking down the street, and then boom, random encounter, goblin yeah. attacks you. And then you know, like you were saying, for the malls and like road signs, uh, there'd be dungeons. You could even gather maybe like three other uh, real people for a party. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to come up with these ideas, but are they truly profitable? I think so, to be honest. I mean, look at Pokemon Go. Like, Nintendo stocks were ridiculously high. So if you just do your research on Nintendo and how they advertise Pokemon Go, I, I think Final Fantasy could fall in the same footsteps. But, uh, again, remember, Pokemon was it was very, very hip in North America. Final Fantasy was pretty hip in North America, but I just don't think it carried that type of pinnacle innovation that Pokemon brought, unfortunately. Especially with the cutesy, you know, Pikachu and all that. It, it attracts a younger audience where Final Fantasy was always about the intense storyline, about these amazing characters, you know. But like I said before, it wouldn't be hard to just, you know, have the same kind of programming as Pokemon Go. You know, gather up three of your real life friends, go fight that behemoth, man. And, you know, maybe you actually, the whole point of the game would be gather all the crystals. Let's say all four dark crystals and all four light crystals so like you know the earth crystal wind crystal water crystal you you can implement this so easily especially for advent fans who know the series off by hand right mm -hmm. so it, i i i don't know i've thought sometimes maybe just you know um going on the square enix website and just you know sending a little contact uh card and just explaining that but uh i don't know it's it's kind of up to them to make that decision right yeah, I think that I think that it it's it's up to you know, and and when I was younger, I was like, oh, you know, I should write to Square Enix and tell them to make a game about this, you know, or right? that, and and then it's like, you know, they're gonna say, shut up, kid, and it, it, yeah, and you get typing it too, and you just feel like, is anyone gonna take me really seriously? You know what you do? You feel like a fanboy right there. Yeah, and, thank you. It's like Star Wars all over again. Yeah, it's like you know, and and don't get me wrong, I love. I love being a fanboy and everything, Same but here. I don't need people to be like another fan 30, mail delete. This thirty-two year old man is embarrassing me with the way he's writing about this imaginary character. You know, okay. I don't, I don't need that in my life. <laughs> yeah, I feel that completely. <laughs> yep. So, but I think that I think that this, you know, with the amount of money they've put towards the mobile 
device, I think that we, I think that it it would it would make sense for them to at least explore some options like this instead of continuing to make Dragon Quest. <laughs> yeah, Dragon Quest. You know, it's... Uh, you go on their like Square Enix uh, publisher, you know, uh, developer on uh, Google Play Store or the oh, Apple yeah. App Store, yeah. and all, you see like you know your Final Fantasies, and then you just see like <laughs> Mana Quest, Dragon Quest, and there's yeah. so many titles, and you're just like Square, come on, you got. You can put your time into better things, right? Like I'm looking at at just the, like I, I'm I'm gonna count down right here. You know, uh, drag quest, 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 drag quest. That's how many mobile dragon quests there are available for you to play right now. I mean, it. How how many did I say there? Like. Like fifteen, yeah, um, exactly. You know, it, great, great. Um, but you know, we're, we're, oh well. Um, and I don't, uh, I, I don't know if it's a little off topic, but what did you think about the price ranging on uh, the Final Fantasy games? So what, some we're, of them are like around twenty five bucks. Yeah, well, that's I a guess, lot of money. I guess United States that'd be like thirty dollars, right? I mean, they, yeah, I mean we're. Let me are like old school, like yeah, they rendered it, they made it look nice, but like, are we really getting the bang for a buck? You know what Here's I mean? Here's the thing. I mean, I I because I wanted to do research for this, um, I started looking in the app store and everything, and like I said, I played, I started playing XVS, and if I do like Final Fantasy, uh, I'm searching on my phone right now just so that everybody can know what I'm doing. So I have Final Fantasy Nine, and I'm just so that everybody knows I'm in in the United States, um, just in case nobody knew that. And uh, Final Fantasy IX is $21 on, Ooh. on the on the App Store for Apple. Um, Final Fantasy VI is $16. Oh, okay. If, uh, if, it's fishy. <laughs> if I wanted to buy, they have a bundle here. Square Enix has a bundle of, it has six, five... Four, three, two, one in the after years for four. Um, you can own that for seventy dollars. Um, seven games for seventy dollars, so that's ten bucks a game. Um, that's not bad. That's okay, but you you know seventy bucks for mobile gaming is a bit much to go. Yeah, in terms of that that statistic, yeah, definitely. Final Fantasy Seven is sixteen dollars. Okay. Final Fantasy 1 is $8 by itself. Final Fantasy Tactics, for those of you that love Tactics, The War of okay. the Lions, is $14. You know, they have Record Keeper, uh, which we never really touched on um, in, in so far, but Record Keeper is very popular, um, but it, it's also... Right. XP. I, yeah, I played a little bit of that. It's kind of like... Um, well, literally, it's... Like as the name goes, it's record keeper. Keeper, you yep. access the game, and um, most of the time you're just going from different worlds. You'll see like a short storyline, and then you'll, you know, like uh, I'd say let's use ten for an example. You know, there's that Titus inject fight. Um, record keeper like specifically allows you to live that moment, so mm -hmm. you kind of get to live the rare moments throughout the game in a very softer tone rather than playing the full game. But you know as well as I do that playing the full game is what builds the character depth, what builds the storyline, right? Yeah. So I, there's there's pros and cons to everything in that sense, but Record Keeper, yeah, it was it's worth it, but will you play it a lot? Uh, probably not. I know some people that do play it, like, that love it on the radio. I just, you know, it's the same idea as XBS. I don't have the time to, you know, because the thing is, is that, there's also, you know, you can pay for things and everything like that in there. Premiums. Yep, freemiums, which is which is fine. Games have to make money. Um, you know, companies need to make money to make games, and Definitely. if you want to charge something for a game, okay, fine, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, so, you know, the... We look at some of these prices. I mean, it it's not a lot of money to buy any of these games, really, but... I've owned these games at one point or yep, another. Yep, right? The so, old school, like, NES, PlayStation titles, you know? Like, yeah. 
I mean, I I must own like 30 copies of Final Fantasy V based upon just having it on a PS3, having it on, you know, on my phone, having it on Steam. You know, it's like, okay, I need I need to not have to keep on buying the same game over and over again. Thank you. It's it, it feels like it, it, it just feels like, uh, you know, I, I love these games. I don't need to own them everywhere, I guess. Yeah, like on every device you possibly own. <laughs> yeah. No, that it, most definitely. So I think that I think that. And some of these games came out a while ago, so the pricing still hasn't come down necessarily for some of them. I think eventually it might. But who knows? I, I mean, it, looking at it in retrospect, I think that Final Fantasy IX will most definitely come down um, oh. because it's it's a new release, so they're keeping the price high. Um, so twenty one dollars, you'll probably see that go down to seventeen at some point, point. Um, and then fourteen. You know, as all of them seem to do, they all seem to kind of follow a uh, a set pricing. Um, That's true. Did you notice when um, playing some of the mobile Final Fantasy games that some of them actually weren't even translated, so they were still in Japanese? Oh, I didn't notice that. Um, I noticed this when I downloaded two other games from the Square Enix uh, developer, you know. Um, yep. It was The World Ends With You, which is like a very... It's a black sheep in a lot of Square Enix's project, but I would highly recommend The World Ends With You. Um, and also uh, Chaos Rings. And they were in Final Fantasy One. Mm-hmm. The actual original, I think it was Dawn, so you got one and two, yep. and it, they were still all dubbed in Japanese. And you go oh, through, wow. set, you, you you know, you go through the settings, trying to like, okay, I want to you know read English and and understand what's happening in the story. And they do not have that actual setting. So some of the games you actually kind of get stuck with it. You purchase it and realize, oh well, it's Japanese dubbed and there's no English, so I am stuck. Oh wow, learn not... Japanese, boys. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I did not notice that, and none of mine have uh, done that. So maybe I just got lucky. Maybe you guys got screwed up in Canada. <laughs> oh, it's all it's, a a. It's always the Canadians. I say. Yep. Yep. Hey, well, even Pokemon Go wasn't released till another like three days after the North American release. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You guys, uh, we we had to we had to you know slowly filter it into Canada. You know. Yeah. Like, pretty much. <laughs> like, you don't want to have it go hog wild there. You know. Yep. <laughs> You guys walking around looking for Pokemon, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So. Uh, well, I think we covered everything. I think we get, you know, this is, like I said, this is going to be a much shorter podcast than, than our first one. Um, but we always have things in the works, that's for yes. sure. Yes. No, like I said, uh, well, I'm going to cut off the first part of this podcast, but uh, our next episode, I'm thinking we're going to be doing it sometime later in August. Um, and I think... We're going to be having um, our special guests from the Breath of Fire Facebook group, the moderators from there. And uh, we're going to we're going to discuss, you know, kind of our pantheon of uh, of JRPGs, you know, and, and kind of talk about what what belongs there, what doesn't belong there. Um, and I think that I think that bringing outside people into our inner circle will really uh, will really help out with us discussing that. A lot of diversity is a grand thing. Yep. So, anyways. All right, Scott. Thank you so much. Anytime. It was always a pleasure being part of it. Always fun, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. See ya. See ya. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. If you want to hear more um, or if you have an opinion, feel free to let us know. Uh, Share this with your friends. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, and we do post to YouTube as well. Uh, any 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 opinions really help us out with developing this more. Uh, we have a lot of cool things down the pipe for you, so uh, please give us a listen and share us with your friends. Thank you so much.